a skilled networker, but I really enjoy socializing and meeting people and going up and saying hi. And uh, I learned a great phrase the other day, and that was, and what brings you here this evening? And it's a brilliant opener, because it just gets somebody talking. What my results reveal is that while you don't have to be an extrovert to ace networking, it certainly helps. Bruce sits in the middle of our lineup, but as a successful salesperson, he has taught himself how to network. Nalisha and Janik are going to have to overcome their introversion to gain the confidence of new clients or hire a manager. Next, our student sales skills are put under the microscope. Hey guys, hey, would you like to go on the draw to win $50? Now they're raffle tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, where's the meat pack? If you just sentenced me to hell, you know, that, that was kind of what it was like. I felt so ridiculous. <laughs>
For a dollar a day, so $365 a year. So if I gave you that, you'd give me, well, let's keep it simple, 700 bucks. Oh, man. <laughs> Pass a bucket. Oh, yeah, man, this is good. I mean, really, he is, he is investing this whole woman's energy and emotion into this piece of plastic. This guy has got it. He's put real value on the lucky stick. Oh, he could have got seven grand, I reckon, at the moment, yeah, the way he's going. <laughs> seems to have something that, that people respond to. They, they seem to trust him. He builds rapport easily. The research says that people like Bruce actually have what are called leadership characteristics. So, you know, they're taller, a bit better looking. He's got a great smile. Mark? Whoa, 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 whoa. He's broken the rules, so I think what we need to do is uh, see how he goes without playing the uh, charity card. Would you be prepared to pay for a lucky stick? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. great. Rules or no rules, Bruce is a natural salesperson. The cause is your luck in life. It was hard, but you just have to, with things like that, you just have to get on and do it and be yourself and uh, enjoy what you're doing. Well, I think he's actually more extrovert than he came across in his profile. I think he actually deliberately made himself appear less extroverted because he's certainly really at ease in these, these social situations. Like Next, our low-scoring introverts, Nalisha and Janak. Facial for, for free and to buy a massage or facial from Isis Spa for $30. Um, sure, I have okay. a... Yeah, what about lucky sticks? I mean... Are they selling facials or are they selling lucky sticks? Yeah, did, did she miss the memo? So what about a free personal training session? Yeah. Can you buy this? For, for a dollar. For a dollar. Yeah, we'll try no, that. they can't do that. That's vetoed. Hey, guys. Hey, would you like to go on the draw to win $50 if you buy one of these for a dollar? Yeah. Now they're raffle tickets. <laughs> I'm so where's the meat pack? <laughs> you know what I mean? They're selling these four lucky sticks for 50 cents. Have you got any money on you? That was fantastic. Yeah. Enjoyed that. I really did. It really pushed me. I think on a scale one to ten, I think it'd be actually be a ten because we actually put in a good effort, I felt. We made some money, and that's the main thing. I give them ten out of ten for their attitude, but their results weren't there. Six dollars seventy is not good enough. And you can't sit there as a business person and pat yourself on the back when the feedback and the result is not there. I think it really helps if you believe in your product, but I don't think that's essential, as long as you appear to believe in it. And I'm afraid that some of these guys just don't seem to even have the appearance of believing in what they're selling. But then yeah, you go... No, you have to believe in it, yeah, Mark. You, you really do. It. It's, uh, it's absolutely necessary. I mean, you just shouldn't be in that product if you don't believe in it. I totally have to agree with Tony here. Unless you are passionate about it and you absolutely believe in it, because you won't be able to sleep at night. Well, the results are surprising. Debs and Lisa, both high extroverts, are poles apart in their sales abilities. Despite breaking the rules, Bruce did ace the challenge and $700 went to Oxfam. Our introverts, well, they can't think on their feet, but at least they approach people with gusto. But none of them use their most obvious sales tool, their phone. There is an easy way to do this. We to combine a couple of our success skills. First, networking. Now, Everybody's phone is filled with people they know, they've done business with, they have a relationship with and have an understanding of what they might do. I'm just going to scroll through mine and see if I can find someone who may want a lucky stick. They're only a dollar each. I just thought to add a little bit of value, have a bit of fun with the customer, have a clear point of reference and difference from other hairdressing salons. When you gave them their receipt as a surprise, you simply hand over the lucky stick. Um, with their uh, with their receipts, so why don't I get 300? I'll I'll bring them over for you. I'll bring them over this afternoon, and I'll put you down for 300 of them. Okay, sounds great. Okay, thank you. Bye, Cheers, Kerry. Bye. Bye. 300. A minute and a half. I sell them by the hundred. There's about 1,200 left. So any part of that? They're only a dollar each. Oh yeah, mate. That sounds great. Is that all right? You're a good man. I'll bring I'll bring them over to the boys um, probably tomorrow at some stage. Uh, that's 800 so far. Um, probably about four minutes, two phone calls. I thought you might want to try 100 or 200 and see what the reaction is from your customer base because I know that you're sending out thousands and thousands of DVDs a day. Sorry, a buck each, mate. How many do you want? Um, can we do like 500 of them, mate? 500? Yeah. I think we've proved the point, haven't we? I continue making phone calls, but I don't think we have any left. I think we're all gone. Coming up, Tony Falkenstein scrutinises business plans. Welches of mine. 
What in the hell is that? Are you a sculptor or what? And John Wall throws the school in the deep end. Pursuing the wrong goal can sometimes sabotage success. In business, this can mean time and money wasted on the wrong product. Some of our participants have brought their business plans to Tony Falkenstein to scrutinise. I think it's important that you don't get, uh, you don't get so wound up with your own uh, enthusiasm that you can't see the wood from the trees. But are they ready to heed his advice? First under the microscope is hypnotherapist Jill. What's the name of your business going to be? Welchers of mind. Welchers of mind. What the hell is that? Do you, you know, are you a sculptor or what? Yeah. I've read your business plan. You've done a lot of study. You are Dr. Jill. You're up there. In fact, Jill, I've got a name for you. I've registered the name, I'll probably sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Hypno Slim. Yeah. You are Dr. Jill, the hypnoslim expert. That's great. So the hypnotherapy is only the means to get there. I quite like the suggestion for the name change. The other advice about hypnoslim, I'm not sure. I'm going to mull it over and see. Jill's been working towards her PhD in hypnotherapy for a long time, and I think that this is just a manifestation of that uh, predisposition to procrastinate. Next in the hot seat, our most ambitious couple, Nalisha and Janak. Tell me, what's unique about your business? I mean, I've done some research on, on the personal trainer business. Do you know why they're called personal trainers? Because they're personal. Do any of your trainers ever leave and take the clients with them? Yes. That's right. That's why we're franchising it. They take their clients, they undercut us, and we know our model doesn't work. <laughs> Why would anyone pay you for a franchise? I can go out as a personal trainer, I can get $60, $80 an hour as a personal trainer. Why should I pay you any money? Because we've learnt all the systems on how to actually market effectively. Like most personal trainers are just one man shows and they don't really know how to market effectively. You guys are passionate, you're focused. You can be super rich. I might be wrong, but it's not going to be personal training. I was very angry. I didn't know where he was coming from because I was actually confused with his logic behind making that decision. Now you've got some unique things about you. No one else can be a beautiful Indian couple like you. India, it's a land of mysticism. 6,000 years they've been using herbs and all sorts of remedies, all sorts of health things. So I want you to go the next month or so, go off to India. Find some of these things because they're there. So what do you think, Janak? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. My God, it's interesting. We want to be multi, multi millionaires, you guys. That's what we want to be. In terms of personal training and the vision that we have and taking this company global, it's still there. After this, hearing um, Howard Schultz, the guy who created Starbucks, he went to over 230 people who are successful and owners of public companies, and they all said he was crazy for starting a coffee company. 230 people who are up there in success and, um, and saying, no, this is dumb. Dumb idea. And after at 231, he got the investors. And now look at Starbucks. Now, Janik and Alicia are either going to turn around, change everything that they have had planned, or, I think this is more likely, they're going to close ranks and they're going to ignore what he says. And they will actually say that Tony is not only wrong, but he's gone down in their estimation. 10%. Last under the hammer, property word. tycoon Ruth. I've been through your business plan, and the average return you're getting on these properties is about 3%. It should be more than that. Well, first of all, he did mention that um, all I was getting was a 3% return on my investment, which was a really, real shock to me because I thought, no, 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 no. I bought those properties about five, six years ago and I was buying them at 11, 12% or probably 10% return. And to, to be told that it's a 3%, it's like, oh my God, it can't be true. But I think reflecting back on it, that's because I've got this huge monster that's sitting in my portfolio that's dragging all the other ones down, making it look really bad. And that monster is Ruth's family home. Will she be prepared to sell it?
After a rude awakening from Tony, it's clear some of our participants need to re-examine their success goals. John has designed an experiment to teach our students how to set new goals. Now that you guys in the pool, we've got some very clear and specific but simple instructions to follow. On my count of three, I want you to bob underneath the water and hold your breath underneath the water for as long as you can. Okay, on my count, are you ready? One, and two, three, and you go. Jill, 11. Anna, 19. Brian, 21. Matt, 22 seconds. 27. Keep going, Bruce. He's now at 55. Can he break a minute? A minute and one. Well done, Bruce. Congratulations. OK, guys, now this time around, we're going to set some new goals. We're going to prove to you that if you set goals, you perform greater than if you don't and I'm going to help you achieve your goals by giving you some new tools. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to time you and let you know when you're underneath the water, we're going to have some cards underneath the water telling you how long you've been under for, so you can measure your performance. I'm going to give you goggles. Each of you have to wear these goggles so you can clearly start to see the times. And we're going to set a goal each. and go around and ask each of you what your new target is. Now, what did you do first up? 19. 19. Now, how far further are you going to go for me? 23. 23. Can you go a bit further than that? 25 or 30? I'll give it a go. Good. Brian, how did you go last time? 21. 21. All right. Now, how much better are you going to do? 45. Righto. How did we go over here? Jill, you didn't <laughs> do too much really last time. I think you did 11, right? Was it 11? I yeah. thought I'm for a minute. A minute? Sensational. A minute it is. Now, Bruce, you did particularly well. You're a minute one. Now, how much improvement have you got? Can you get to a couple of minutes? Well, you said it, two minutes. Um, All right, let's have a crack. <laughs> now, Ruth, how'd we go? 13. OK, what's your new target? Double that. You're going to double it? Stay focused on it, minute 26. And Johnny, how'd you go? Uh, I think it was 27. 27. Now, what are you going to get to? What's the new goal? Double it, at least. Double it. 54. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll go a minute. Go a minute. That's we'll go it. A minute. Go a minute. Yeah. All right. OK, here we go. On the count of three. One. Big breaths. Two. And three. Under you go. Matt, 23. Matt. Anna, 40 seconds. Well done. Brian, a minute. You achieved your goal. Jill, amazing. 115 from 11 seconds. That's unbelievable, Jill. Minute 37, Johnny. Beautiful. Another 50%. Well done. The moment I put my head underwater, I thought, I'll hammer this record. <laughs> Just by relaxing, actually. So I figured you'd want to use our penny oxygen. Go, Bruce. He's going well, folks. He's broken to the two-minute mark. He's achieved his goal. Let's see how far past he can go. 2.15. Bruce, you're right up there. After the break, just how far will Bruce go to break his record? And who is heeding our advice? Bruce has now been under the water for 2 minutes 30 seconds and our goal coach John is impressed. Keep going Bruce, this is amazing. I sort of 